podcast with Sam and Landon. And uh, got the audio. We're going live. Let's do this. All right, Facebook Live. Hop on. We're about to go podcast in it. We'll wait for a second. Okay, so I will introduce. Ready? Ready? Cool. Start, ready to start the podcast? On three. One, two, three. <laughs> podcast. Let's go. All right, so my name is Sam Tagger. Uh, and this is the DDD podcast, and I'm here with Landon Smith and Sam Struthers, and he is Sam is the CEO of Crest Exteriors, and Landon is the general manager of Fort Worth, and these guys are all stars. So I'm going to give you a quick little background. Uh, like this if you know them. If you know them, share this. Uh, this is going to get wild. So just a quick little intro. What we're going to be talking about today is going to be about how culture attracts, how we create a culture to get new customers, new people, the buy-in, so people are out hustling, and they've created this really strong brand around what they're what they're all about. So I think what's unique and what I'm excited about is these guys have done what few roofing companies have done as far as growing their sales organization, having bigger and loftier goals instead of being complacent at the four guys. Yeah. And we did our sure. four million last year, you know what sure. I mean? Sure. Um, so Sam... He, his best year was 3.5 million personally, and they did 25 million last year. Uh, Landon has had a 3.2 million dollar year. So if you have not done that, you probably have something to learn on this. So super excited! Some of the best roofers in the industry right here at Crest Hustle, baby. Yeah. Hashtag, yeah, I love it. I, I mean, it, they got me a they got me a band. So we've been out. I've been out yeah, here for us. Yeah, I was gonna say. I was like, you gave me like, oh yeah, yeah. You gotta show that. Take this off. Take this off. So one thing that's unique, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there. I come here and he's like, yeah, we've got a few people with tattoos of even Crest Hustle on our freaking thing. His assistant had Crest Hustle on her butt last yesterday. I was like, you no kidding. Like you literally on his arm. How many people? First tattoo. First tattoo. But I had seven guys at the damn tattoo parlor. That's insane. You know, seven people of our of our team getting tattoos. So I want to know how do you how do you not get a tattoo as the CEO? Tag hey tag somebody on here if they've tattooed their company. On, yeah. <laughs> Text him yeah, on let your, me know. Let so, me know who where's has. Kenny Odell? Kenny Odell, he literally had a pinnacle tattoo here. Pinnacle doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> 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 so careful, yeah. not here to jinx it. But, yeah. um, anyway, so they've done a phenomenal job. Like it was so funny. They're handing out these bracelets at Top Golf yesterday. I did a training for them. Yeah, everybody and, had one. And literally the entire Top Golf floor had everybody little had Crest Hustle bracelets. And like, what like, is this about? Yeah, yeah, the, what? Can I have one? Little, it was so cool. Little interest, right? You give it to one person. Guys, like, hey, I want one of those. Yeah, I don't know what, what it is. What is it? What's cr- and, and all of a sudden they've we do it everywhere we go, right? Everywhere it's they go. Part of, part of go and and one thing that they've done phenomenally is a lot of their business comes through social media referrals. You know how much? What percent of your business is referrals? Sixty-five percent is still referrals, but everything's referrals. So I mean, yeah. It's, so it's how much more new referrals. business we can get? What I'm excited about learning with you is how much more referral we're going to get off that new business. Yeah. So right? so all of it's going to keep coming in. With our culture, and once they once they meet our guys and they see our positivity in that culture, that's what grows our business. Not only our team, but it grows your business model, right? Because your customers see it too. If you have happy happy sales reps, you get more you get exactly more, you get more deals. That's the goal. So. so part of their culture, and that's what we're going to dive into. We've got a lot of people on here uh, listening. If you're listening in audio, uh, audio, SoundCloud, iTunes, whatever, um, like this, share this, comment. We'd love to hear your feedback. And anybody that's got a tattoo, tag them because <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. But <laughs> But here's here's the question that, um, and this is really the topic and the thread that we're really going to discuss is kind of what what that culture means to you, why, what it's done, you know, the results from it, and how it's expanding and attracting, and you just kind of hit this momentum phase. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're going to really focus on today. But before we dive into that, I want to know a little bit about how you guys got into this space. You know what I mean? You guys are the big wigs in the roofing space, but sure. like. How'd you yeah. get started? Yeah, a lot of a lot of the roofing industry is uh, insurance restoration work. Yeah. So um, there's there's a big portion of new construction, there's a big portion of retail, but insurance restoration is still probably the, the largest chunk, um, specifically in Dallas, Texas. So I started as an insurance adjuster. I, I was working claims for the carriers at a young age. My dad did that and brought me into that at 15. He's still here doing it. Still that. here doing it. As he said, I was like, wait, that is so, awesome. So, yeah, so, so you, know, you got me into that, that space. Me and my wife traveled the country. Um, in turn, as an adjuster, you meet a lot of roofers, right? So you, you're going to insurance inspections, and the roofers there. You, so I, I got a large network throughout the country, meeting roofers, um, learning their business model. Had a small piece at home on them on the side, and then um, Crest also started. I mean, we just we decided to build our own thing, and yeah. I, I I saw I heard pain points from other roofers across the country, and 
thought I would do it different, right? So I went into sales. I had a great work for a great company, town and country, Ralph Harris. Shout out to Ralph. He's still my guy. Uh, Love it. Runs a great company in Frisco. Um, showed me basically what a leader is and then uh, decided to do it on my own and, and uh, help other people um, develop a model that I would want to be a part of as a sales rep. So my whole business model is based on on my sales team, right? Because that's that's where the, the whole business starts and stops at sales. If you don't have sales, I can't put a good roof on your house. If I don't have sales, I can't create a big culture. I can't, I can't help more salespeople come in here without sales. So developing a business model around what it would be like if I was if, if I was a sales guy where I would want to go is what I did. I make it fun. I make it exciting. I, I get the swag. I get all the culture. I stay positive. I don't want a boss nagging on me. I don't mind him helping me, right? So we, we, we approach the whole industry, um, the whole business model like that, like as if I was a top producer, how would I want to be treated? And how would I want my company to treat me? And we treat our top producers. We treat our every producer that way. And that's how we develop top producers, right? I love you gotta it. Keep a, you got to keep a starter around to make him a top producer. You can't just treat everybody um, the same either. So you have to go through and, and build, build on the culture. I mean, that's what that's how we how we blew up. And it's attractive to people. Success breeds, uh, attracts success. Yeah, and right? that's what Absolutely. we're going to dive into a lot. I'm excited to yeah. kind of jam tell on me that. More. Yeah, let's so, go. so what about you, Landon? How did you get into this? Uh Tell us a little bit of your story. My start was a little different. I've always just been a hands-on type of person. And, uh, you know, I got into the contracting world after being in sales and telemarketing and, and uh, that whole industry um, with uh, wireless and all that. So I came from, from uh, uh, more of a business type sales point and then came into contracting and kind of blended those two. And, you know, sold for some smaller companies uh, in, in the beginning and didn't learn much. Uh, pretty much was just kind of the, the canvasser, you know. So I've kind of done, uh, started there um, and then had opportunities to work for other companies um, quick and uh, learned a lot um, in a big operation and uh, put all that skill set into dealing with customers. I mean, at the end of the day, we meet people and we solve problems and we create solutions and you know, all these different skill sets that I've used in other industries kind of blended into this. So I just kind of naturally got into it, started, um, you know, you know be, becoming proficient with being a salesman, trying to soak up all the little bits and pieces from different people that I could associate with. Yeah. Um, kind of like how he did with adjusters, you know, being an adjuster and dealing with different roofers, I dealt with my peers and just soaked up all the, the information I could. So. Along the way, um, hard work and dedication is something that's in, important to me, um, and I worked hard, you know. So that, that kind of accompanied with the opportunity and, and knowledge that I've learned. It put me in a platform where here I am. So you excited? Um, you you ready to stop? Storm's I'm, hitting. I'm awesome. Dallas yeah, just I'm got great. hit. I'm great. It's about to get uh, again. Uh, 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 it's raining right now. It's raining it's right, right, right now. It's at six o'clock. We got five hours. We're, we're in the we're in the biggest market in the country. It, it happens all the time. There's there's so many people to help, and so you know, one of the things that's important to me is helping people. So, yeah, you know, Sam shares. That's that's hundred percent part of our culture. So help here here to help is one of our big hashtags we like to use. Uh, means more than just helping customers to me to me it means helping sales reps it means helping everybody but um richard branson said it best right you take care of your employees they'll take care of your customers so what we tell our sales team instead of you know we, we, we talked a lot about door-to-door -door this week while you're here um what we we tell our sales team instead of going out and trying to get five contracts today go out and five, find five people you can help today mm -hmm. right get out there and not just if, if, this, if the answer is no at the door, no problem. How can we help you, right? Maybe they're a future customer. Maybe we can fix their gate. If you got a, if you got a wrench in your thing and their gate, you see someone outside, go try to help them. If you can make five new friends every day and not necessarily sign five new contracts, you might have five new customers in the future. So we've learned a lot more from you on the door-to-door -door and how to go get the, that door business. But we like to get the yard business, too. They're out in the front yard talking. We, we'll go help them. We'll go, we'll go change some shit. But helping people is 100% is our goal. I like love that's, that. That's the fun part, man. Yeah, because it's like, I, I think the biggest problem in sales, and correct me if I'm wrong, is most salespeople sometimes almost feel guilty Absolutely. for like, I'm, I'm, I'm taking their money. It's like, ah, I don't like to be sold. We're so are pushing a product. Yeah, I'm pushing a product. Yeah. Versus if you can shift your paradigm to, I'm here to serve. Yeah. Oh, we feel, I feel 100% that I'm helping somebody every time I sell. I mean, yeah. ha the team has to believe in that or, or it's or, or this selling, need, right? I have a solution. I'm here to help. Yeah, and I remember when I did alarms, um, 
you know, there's a lot of lawn people probably watching this. We got over, we got a ton of people on here, but like, people around there. Um, right. ton. so anyway, so we've got, you know, I, I look at it and I would, I would do alarms and, and I had to, I had to change my mentality of like, well, these guys have never been broken into. I'm in West Texas and they're still all over Texas sure. where everybody has guns, dogs, and you know, and never been broken yeah. into. Good neighbors, yeah. right? Yeah. Good people. Yeah. Yeah. And, Have um, a rebuttal when that gun comes yeah. out, right? Yeah. And, so, <laughs> but it, and, it was, and it was always beating on me because I'm like, man, I'm just selling a product that they probably don't need. Yeah. And I would, it would beat me up. And, and yeah. then all of a sudden, I kind of switched my mentality to that whole like, okay, hypothetically, if this person got their broken into and guy comes in to take their daughter right. in two years and they didn't have this, yeah. Like what? 100%. Like that could happen. Yeah. 100%. And I'm like, it, likelihood super low. It changed but your it, approach. So. It sh- totally shifted. Like I'm here serving you in a hypothetical situation, and if I don't, if I don't do it, then it's going to be on me in yeah. two years when you're like, Remember I see you in the newspaper. You know what I mean? Sure, it's 100%. like, yeah. it, and, and and I think like. And any product, I think, as long as a sales rep can shift that, like what you were saying. Yeah, it's a mindset. I mean, controlling the mind is one of the hardest things we do every day, right? I get up every day and have to sell myself that, I, that I'm going to do something great today. I'm going to get up and I'm going to do it for my team and I love what I do. That's, it's, it's easy to, it's, a, it's one of those, those switches you just have to turn on. You have to say it out loud, say it to yourself every day. You know, you say it to your team, to get up motivate your other team. You don't always want to. You don't always want to. Me, I don't always want to, <laughs> but I go. Yeah, yes. that's, okay, that, let's kind of transition to that because that's, that's actually a good thread. So what keeps you, what gets you up when you do wake up and it's like, ah, uh, it's one of those days. You know what I mean? Like, like everybody's about to go start their big seasons, right? Everybody's going to, yeah. storms are hitting, summer started, everybody. That's like, your why, right? So, That's what yeah. you're asking. What's, what's the why? But like, yeah, but like, what do you do? You're sitting there, you're like, man, I made great money. You sell $3 million of roost. It's not like you're hurting for change. You know what I mean? And it's like, but how do you shift it on every day? Like, how do you stay on? There's multiple, multiple reasons. Um, I, you know, I've, I've got a family to support. Most people see my girls. You know, that's very important to me. That's number one. Um, number two, you know, I do really enjoy helping people. And I do get to see face-to-face when I get to help people restore their homes, mm-hmm. their most prized possessions. So that's actually legitimately a very strong motivating factor for me. So you um, took it as like, I have to do your roof because... Your TV, your jewelry, your, I mean, well, your kid may, your the kid. mold grows, your kid's going to get sick, sick. be in the hospital. That, the same way you're talking about getting the obituary from somebody getting broken and, and yeah. losing their life. I mean, that's real. I've got a job right now. Yeah. I've got them where yeah, it's all over the ceilings, you know? Yeah, it's the, like freaking, kids the ceiling falls in because it's got a pool yeah, on it. And you so, didn't even know. Sure. So, like, so, you know, we got to take care of that. And so, yeah, there's, there's a real need to help people and and this is an industry where there's not a lot of there's there, there's a lot of unhonest people um you know less than honest whatever you want to I don't know if dishonest is, is probably the word you're looking for i know i got, <laughs> a, couple, be, I got a couple buddies yeah. out there that are gonna hang me out for yeah. that. sam made a lot of words up and yeah I trained, all I, trained twice. Up. I trained today yesterday and literally mm-hmm. you're like that's not how you spell that's not how you spell guys i don't even finish writing the word transit We'll just put yeah. trans. Yeah. 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 Well, if you don't, if you follow me in your Orlando and you don't follow Sam, you should. The guys are rock stars. Uh, yeah. Tell us a lot in the last couple of days. Yes. So, yeah. you know, those two are really important to me. Um, uh, you know, helping teach and lead others has become very, very important to me. Um, as this has all kind of taken on, I didn't really expect that to be such a motivator. And, and it has become that. And everybody that wakes up every day and sits there and comments and interacts and puts their two cents yeah. in it's like they push me you know what i mean it's like even though even the bad ones even the ones that are like i'm pushing you. me yeah there's people counting on you for that Absolutely. selfie yeah we, 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 need right. that, we need that selfie on the roof and, it, a, and it's, a, it's, a it's almost in ter- it's almost like you're you're almost taking the fact that you're like i need to inspire others Am I right? Well, right? Like, you know, I mean, if I'm not out there, then it's like that's demotivating because they're counting on that. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, wow. I, I I struggle with procrastination. I, I I mean, I still do. Everybody does. You know what I mean? Whether as much as I do, there's things that I that's my struggle. So that was part of kind of the mindset is like I'm gonna hold myself yeah, accountable. Yeah. I'm gonna start putting it out there. And it's like if I can't get it done, then I'm kind of look like it. Yeah, yeah. Almost, yeah, I look like a liar. Right. I look like so, a fake. And yeah. there are a lot of those. I don't like yeah. to be fake. I don't like right. to lose. You know what I mean? I yeah. like to win, and I like to. That's a good point. Accountability, right? So you get up. Why, why do you get up in the morning? Because not only do you hold yourself accountable in today's age, of social media, 
and everything oh, else. Man, we, we're you. holding ourselves accountable by setting our goals so high, and what we plan on doing at Crest is 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 next level, right? I want to I want to outwork the work. We say a lot too. Um, I have to hold myself accountable to what I've said I'm going to do. Right? That's awesome. You got to come that's through. It's, it's like I got to show up. I've, you got to show up. You got to do. It. I got to show up. You can't go knock on these people's doors and so say, "Hey, just... I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this," and then just not do it. Yeah, that don't work. That just don't write your goals down. Say them out loud. Tell it, say them out loud to yourself every day. You'll hold yourself accountable. I love that. Yeah, I mean that's what I do. So let's kind of shift gears because you are so outspoken. A lot of people on social media see Crest. They see you guys posting five days. Somebody was like, "You said five rooms a day." Like, what do you say? You're like, I post literally every room. Oh, I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah. I, I always tell everyone I post like a ninth grade girl. Yeah. And I post everything. Like, I mean. The more content you can get, it's free content. I mean, social media is one of the best marketing tools that we have at Crest, not only for um, for our customers, but for recruitment. For for we're going to talk about culture, right? We're going to yeah. talk about how that affects our company. It helps helps our company recruit, <clears throat> helps us build a sales team, it helps our sales team um, get affirmation that their company they're working for is doing great things, right? So they want to know they're part of something bigger than themselves. A lot of sales guys don't want to. They want to compete against other roofers too. So if I post to all these other guys. You know, <clears throat> excuse me. We got a hundred sales reps. If I post five roof roofs, sales, sales reps roofs, and the other ninety five are like, "Hey, you didn't share my roof. I'm, I'm gonna put my roofs on Facebook." It starts. It, we have a culture on Facebook. <coughs> you gonna be all right, boss? Yeah, I'm working on it. So how do you, how do you how do you how have you seen the results of like being almost like over the top on Facebook? You know, I, and I don't think there is a thing is over the top. I, I, I don't think a few people hit and dislike or un, uh, unfriendly because uh-huh. that's all they see. Maybe yeah. unfollow me, but it doesn't doesn't hurt my feelings. I'm sorry I posted too many roofs. But um, so, how has that yeah. helped with customers? Let's go the customer route and then we'll go to the group. So, group. when I started doing, I, you know, I started kind of having people follow me, like, oh my god, this roof every roof, stop posting that. And then you know, right now, some people are talking about that with my traffic, <coughs> but it's not gonna happen. Big red, baby. Big red, baby. <laughs> yeah. Twelve times a day. Everybody knows it. Too. Just wait till it's getting wrapped. Get wrapped oh, right soon. Um, so, you know, my thing was, is that I started posting for just, I kind of like the photography side of it, you know, and so the pictures just kind of started happening and I started realizing that the interesting ones would gain traction and get comments and likes and, you know, discussions going and all that stuff. And so it just kind of started snowballing. Um, but my, when I started putting more jobs in, you know, my customers, I've got a lot of customers or pending or future customers, um, past customers, um, friends of customers, the, the whole links of everything that watch my day to day. And so when <clears throat> the need comes up, I have automatic network that comes. Yeah, in. storm hits. They already know what to expect. Yeah. They know what's going to happen. They know I'm going to show up and I'm going to do the inspection. They know I'm going to take care of anything that needs to be covered. They know I'm going to walk them through the process. They know that my crew is going to come in and make it look easy sometimes, you know. Um, but we're going to put on better quality. We're going to we're going to go through there. So the customer base sees all that. The other side of it was the development of my peer base. And that was really, you know, that was cool because it's like, you know, you you get a, a kind of a not a gratification but like a, a reassurance that you're doing what you should be doing so it's like you create this network that automatically feeds you every day yeah. and so it's like yeah. i was focused on the customer side of it at first you know because i was like let me try this let me see if yeah. this age of technology is going to work you know and apparently people are watching so i'll keep going um but it, as i started getting the the confidence with my peers, that's where I really started learning. I mean, I learned a lot about the industry just just on social media and interacting with people. People call me all the time. My number's all over my Facebook page. You can go back on my news feed and find my number and just yeah. call me at any time. You know? Finding customers on Facebook was the original goal, right? That yeah. was the original thought process until you started seeing, you know, how we were building a culture behind it. But getting... Getting customers on Facebook, you know, I'm from the North Texas area. This is my hometown, my stomping grounds, if you will. Wiley, baby. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm actually from Allen, but yeah. Allen, I, know, I do live in Wiley. Top goal. Wiley got hit, yes. So, um, you know, obviously I have a bunch of, what Facebook was originally created for was for friendships, right? You can follow your friends, you follow your people from your past. And I don't think any of them know, don't know what I do for a living, right? right. I can You're go on there and I don't know what they do for a living. They post their kids, they post their food, they post, which is great, right? But I started posting pictures of Ruth. If a friend from high school needs a roof, 
They know who's that the, guy that's they, always posting. They, they know that guy that always posts pictures yeah. of roofs, right? Yeah. So that's how you get customers it, it, through Facebook. You know, th- th- it, on the on the micro scale, <laughs> on a macro scale, obviously we're sitting in a green room. We have techniques we use for media buys, for actual commercials, for lead funnels, stuff like that. But as far as organically on Facebook, it's just through friends and everything. So we're po- constantly posting roofs. Everyone knows I'm a roofer. Yeah, because most right. people... And it's you, constantly growing. Yeah, I was going to say, like, that's the thing. I don't think people realize. It's like, it may not be the friend that buys, but it's the friend's friend that buys. It's the friend's I've friend. had, like, five degrees of separation. I've had somebody yeah. call me and be like, so I saw this post of my uncle. He called They, they, they said that their neighbor yeah. had a son that was a roofer, and he's working for this other company now. Yeah, and the yeah. larger we grow those algorithms, the more likes we get on a, on a page, and someone posts on that. Like, say, say a friend from high school posts on there. Her uncle may see that post because she commented on it. May yeah. say, "Hey, your niece posted on this page or liked this page," and that's how you get more degrees of separation. And also, the more we scale those likes, the scale the number of viewers, the scale of, you know all of that creates those algorithms that create that. larger degrees of separation to get organic growth for customers. So, if you're listening or watching this, I would invite you guys to say, "How can I leverage social media more to help supplement the doors?" But, like, yeah. you know, how do you say, let's play both feed the together. Two together. together. Feed the two yeah. together. It's like what you're talking Recruiting, about. Recruiting, like, where do you create, what I call is just free energy. You're yeah. already out there. You're already out on a roof. You're what? already out with a the customer. They're already, no, they have friends. And it's like, why not post about it? Why not store be proud it? Of it? Why right? not be proud of right? it? Right? I know stores, baby. Let's go. Let's be proud of it. Out. Let's do, 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 some, do some selfies. Take some, take some videos. Let everybody know that's what you do. And if they want to come recruit and build teams, then recruit some guys and show them, be proud of what you do. Right? Yeah. I mean, I'm proud of being a roofer. Love it's, that. A, it's not necessarily the highest on the pecking order. He's so I'm proud he made a Crest Hustle gun. I yeah. <laughs> Into I'm sure that makes, hey. makes well, I got, well, I got a hit to get one. Yeah, right. yeah. What's yeah. Myself, What's yeah. Well, come on. I, I, I wanted a great press gun too. Sorry, yeah. you're gonna say something. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I think even with the customer, what, what, what about the the ultimate in, um, intention of you knock on that door and that person opens the door and goes, Chris, or, or whatever, or, or, or something. Yeah, door you know, door. they recognize the brand because maybe they were on Facebook and that algorithm was scrolling our feed because well, their sister in law down the street used us. That's what I said. Neighbors tend to have neighbor friends on Facebook. Yeah. So you get the neighbors posting about you. My favorite. I've seen thing, that sign, that logo yeah, on that, such and such post last night. And it's yeah. like, and it's a subliminal. So it's like a knock selfie. on the door. It's like, yeah. hey, it's landing with Crest. Any of my guys stop by? Exactly. You so, know what I mean? So it's it's so awesome. I I love okay, let me talk about culture with your taking a neighborhood by storm. Yes. This is my favorite. Storm chasers, they're gonna take neighborhood by storm. So if you have a truck, I wanna see a big smiley face. Give it a smiley face Smileys. if you have a big truck. Because that is one thing about the roofing industry. I pull into the parking lot. I, yeah. I pull I pull into the parking lot and I'm like, wow, this is like, you know, a sales company's like where I come from, it's BMWs and Audis and stuff like that. There's some big trucks. I mean, Utah, they're hunters and stuff. But like, dude, it was just trucks. Like, oh, <laughs> there was no trucks. other thing yeah. but trucks. Yeah. But like, what yeah. I thought was cool was how wrapped they were. How, um, and then you took that picture of that neighborhood where, where you had like seven like, trucks, a yeah. Crest Razor, a freaking trailer. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, holy cow. But like, um, so what, like, tell us about kind of your philosophy behind this whole take neighborhood by storm and how that's benefited you guys. The, the hardest decision that I've seen that customers have is choosing who to use. And at the end of the day, thousands of roofers go out into the same neighborhoods. It's not a secret where the damage is. They can find it in 24 hours and they all go baiting on these doors and they go through the same pitch. And it's the same thing every day. It's Groundhog Day. It's just they're standing at the door listening to the same guy run run through the deal. Um, if we hit the doors a little bit more originally and we go with as a team, then they don't just see one individual with a brand on their shirt. They see a team interacting as a team. Yeah, we'd like to go in with energy. I don't know. Uh, we I'm did a lot of your this. training. We love what you do. But if you saw us the day after the storm, we have another book oh, going was, tomorrow. It was going. We're not, we're not lazy roofers. We're not just taking Saturday off. No. Nope. It's pouring down rain outside here yep. in Dallas. So tomorrow on Sunday we have a we have a blitz we call them blitz we have a blitz planned. We've got a fifty three foot RV and you've seen the trucks. They're they're big, big trucks. Yeah. They're big trucks. So we're gonna have probably 15, 20 trucks in the neighborhood, you know, 20, 30, 40 canvassers out. And there's eight hundred houses in the neighborhood. We're gonna hit every single one of them tomorrow. And that energy they get, that that neighborhood gets when they when you open the door to talk to a roofer and there's 
three roofers on roofs across the street. You can reference and say, you know, Miguel's over there already back. on the roof talking to Miss yeah. Johnson. You know, I mean, they it's were, just like they, they were great. Listen. And then another it's roofer's an in, by himself in that neighborhood. Oh, they're driving they through and they're just like, oh, stop the dude in the street. And they're like, oh, no, I'm that I'm, way. I'm and not going to touch this. Yeah. I love that. The or if Charlie T pulls in, he pulls right up next door and... Let's See go, you, buddy. I love Talk that. No, I think that's such a cool strategy because you know your dudes, like, even for the knockers, they're kind of like, man, I don't want to look like an idiot. Like, they're all knocking. I should be knocking. And it's yeah, like it's that. accountability. It's it does. It's, it's does. team so, accountability. You've, you've done a lot this it week just showing us how we can take that to the next level. But um, that's what we've done in the past. We, we, like, we like that culture. We bring that high energy. We've got a buggy. Awesome. That's, we got a, a UTV that's wrapped Dude, in that's press. Sick. Throw some flags up. Play some Crest. We have a rap song. The Crest, the Crest Buggy plays a rap song. What? We have a first, first rap song? Our first rap two rap songs. Rap songs. Yeah. Can you, can, do you know it? Can you rap it? Oh, no, I can't rap it. Doug, play it. Doug, Doug is it on Doug your phone? Doug Hilbert. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Dude, wait. play this. I want to hear this rap song. Go find it on your Zach phone. Zach's in it. Hold on. I'm going to turn my phone on. Since okay, while that's turning on, we'll keep doing it. I'll get it up for you. So let me, let me ask you this. What, um, what do you do while that's turning on? What do you do when there's other roofers, when you are the fifth guy and you haven't taken it by storm? Because I think I get that question a lot. Or you're the, you know, everybody's yeah. out there, they're going to get this, oh, you're the fifth alarm dude. You're the third pest guy. You're the tenth solar guy. You're the 50th roofer. Oh, there's yeah. some neighborhoods you know I mean? that I can knock and lead with, hey, let me guess, I'm number 15. Yeah. And they'll laugh and it's like, okay, well, obviously we somebody it, hasn't done their job. Eight mile. Okay. Somebody... Yeah. You know, you've got eight people who have looked at your roof. Somebody hasn't done their job well enough because you're still looking. <clears throat> so what is it that you're still looking for <coughs> that other eight people didn't give you that you need to know so that you can get this fixed? Because I can tell that it's done. I drive a nine-foot-tall truck. I can see your roof, <laughs> you know. So I was on your neighbor's roof behind you. I can see your house. I, and it has the same damage. So what did they not do for you that I need to do? I like that. That's... The, so what did they, yeah, what were they missing? What like, did they miss? Like, you know you're going to do this. You know you need it. And I think that works with any product. It's yeah. like, you know you have bugs. You know you're going to get a system anyway, like, one day. You know everyone's going to go solar. You know that you're going to, you're watching TV in the first place. You already are paying for TV. You are, you know, whatever it is. And it's like, what was it that didn't, Phone's coming on, that didn't whatever, right? Just does so this. I want to hear this, uh, yeah, let's hear this rap battle. Like this if you want to hear the Crest rap song. Oh, they, talk song. about culture. We, <laughs> we, got, we, got, link, we, we got, got a link we shirts. can drop, but here's okay. the audio. Yeah, I want to hear this, I want to hear this rap song. Yeah, put it kind of close to this so we can, okay, this is fun. This is all Abba. This is, this is version one. This thing's awesome. This is my favorite one. We got two of them. Did uh did one of your guys make this? Who made this? Yes. Check yeah. Check reviews, we got the proof. Christ is here. Just heard the shoot. Just call us up, get an estimate. That's commercial or residue. Why use another company and we the best there is and that's evidence of our press. Mysterious. Talk to you. I like what you saw. I know, right? You're like, I'll send it to you, man. You can I wanna see some video in your environment. Bumping the crest with the right. Where's your bracelet? You got that bracelet. So I want. I want to see a video. You tag me in the video when you go back home. This is Bumping. a legit rap song. Yeah. I, I love just mess, it. Bracelets are free. Y'all okay, mess I'm, I'm gonna make a bracelet. challenge. If you're listening to this or you're following this, I want to hear the best. I want to hear other people make rap songs. Like I want to. Yeah. Where's your rap song at? Yeah. Guys? Where's your rap where's song? Your rap song, like, Freddie. Send us your rap song. <laughs> here, I'm gonna uh, send we, this to you. We, right we here. talked earlier, and I was impressed with some culture from some of the some of the door to door guys. Yeah, I want to hear. Okay, so I want to keep going real these quick. These podcast things are uh, kind of fun. I know they're fun. Is so it, first, it first time I've done yeah. one of these guys. Just so now what we need. So I want to keep diving into culture a little bit. Turn so this back off. So okay, turn that back off. So if you're listening to this, this is all about culture, right? So basically, when you, how do you start a culture? Let's say, like when you first started, it wasn't like there was some crest culture. Sure. So, like, I'm, let's call me a little guy. I'm the little company. I'm a little team. I got three or four guys because I'm sure you started small, right? What were the simple steps you took to develop culture? Sure. Uh, identifying core values. Okay. That's first, right? You got to identify what you want that to be. And it's hard for me. To, I can tell you what my core values are. Um, but everyone's going to have their own yeah. unique core values. Positivity is first and foremost for us. We don't do negative negativity we like everyone to be positive sure we have problems right but yeah, we solve yeah. them in a positive way right do that do that first 
Um, teamwork makes the dream work is another one of our core values. Uh, working as a team, never being afraid of uh, trying to try to ask someone to split commissions or do this other crap. We need help. We, we, we help others. Can't um, get there. And it started from the top, right? I go out as the CEO. If you don't have to serve that hour, come out there, throw a ladder up, do the inspection, sign the deal for you, hand it to you, walk you through the whole process. Um, the team started doing that for each other. And even as a small group, we started helping each other as a small group. And as the team got bigger, Others would join and they'll follow, right? If, 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 if the other 20 people that are already in the company are all helping each other, this guy's not going to go, I don't do that. I don't get paid commission. While the other 20 all help each other. Eventually, the, the mold's going to help itself, but it starts at the beginning. It starts with leadership. Um, if you don't have, if you don't have a, a core structure, like a core, the core values of positivity to helping others uh, and teamwork, then you're not going to get um, what you want. The, the, the loudest person in your company is going to create the culture. If you don't set that intentionally, right? If you don't intentionally create a culture, the the most vocal person in your company will set the culture. Which yeah. sometimes People are going to listen. Good. Right? You do, you want it to be the leader. So as the leader, you want you want to call out negativity is what we do, right? We, we, ne- negativity or positivity. I'm sorry, positivity, teamwork, and helping others are our three core values, right? Integrity before profits, our mission statement. And we live that, and we call people out on that, right? If you come in, why? If we ask you how you're doing today, if you say you're having a good day, we're going to mm-hmm. jump on you. So, what does it take to go from good to great in this company, right? We want you to come in and have a great day every day. At least trick your mind into having a great day, right? It's all mental. So, of course, we all have bad days, but you can't just don't show it. Not in the, not in the workplace, right? We this is a positive atmosphere. We want positivity in our workplace, and everyone. I feel like our employees come here. To get that right, mm-hmm. they get negativity they get at home. Up. They get you know if you're depressed at home, they can come to work and have a good time. They know they're going to come in. They're going to have energy in the workplace, and it lets them stay here longer. They work harder. They're more productive. And they enjoy their job. Right. I love that. All of those things are are, are 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 important to us, and that's how we did it. You can you can do like I said. Some people have different values, but that's what that's what our values are. Yeah, I think it'd be to to. to to reiterate that, but it's like get with your leadership core, like the CEO and the whatever the start of that. No, it was, it was, yeah, exactly. And say what are our core values? Yeah. And what are we going to do to intentionally make these core values for others? How are we going to hold them accountable to that? I mean, positive. We hold people accountable for being positive in the office. Like we will call you out. And now, but once you do that to the first, so there was three of us, right? We were yeah. positive. When we called the third guy out every time he was negative, he started being positive. When there was a fourth guy, he would start calling the other guy out because he got called out a bunch. And he was right? saying, yeah, he was like, so, well, he should get called out. I got called so out. So I'm going to yeah. call him out. So now the whole team, like now there's 20, now there's 10 of us. Right? Yeah. The 11th guy comes in. You don't have to teach the 11th guy. The other oh, 10 people are going to teach that 11th guy. And then the, now the 12th guy comes. Well, the 11th guy is going to jump on them. Yeah. Next thing you know, you've built a you've built a core. I love that. It's, it's something that you have to do in a company, and you have to do it intentionally, in my opinion. It's something you did very well. From, yeah. From outside looking in as they were developed. My business partner is a big, big role, and I know he's not Logan's here today. Dude, Logan, Logan grabs what, what a stud. What a stud. It, 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 it was inf- it's an infectious um, funnel, you know. Um, when, when you build the right system, the foundation, if you will, and things work well, it attracts people. We work in a very stressful environment. Our workload is extreme. And when you can simplify that for people and you can make it fun and inviting and positive. And know that there's people to help you out. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. That anyone in the company will pick the ball up for you if you ask them to. Not just, you know, say we're behind in supplements. If anyone else on the team knows how to write a supplement, all of them will raise their hand and be like, I've got a free second. Come over here. I'll write the supplement yep. for you. If we're doing production and and production's backed up, and they you need a you need a subcontractor. Anyone in the room will come come to you, introduce you to a new sub, schedule it for you, and help you walk you through that process. Wow. Um, cool. And that's that's all started because when they come in, they see the whole group was doing it right. That's always been the whole group thing. So I love it. I love so, that. So it starts with just kind of duplicating the culture. It's, it's making sure it's making sure that new guy. Part of, it's it's making that new yeah. guy make sure that he's on your culture level. Yep. And yeah. And then he'll 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 hold the next guy accountable. And the group just always, then it just, so it's like you, a sourdough do? bread. Yeah, but what do you do? Going. So this is this is going to happen. I don't care what sales company you're at. What do you do with the bad apple? That's just like fighting the grant. Like, how do you handle the the guy that's not fitting <laughs> that, that it's, culture? It's not fitting the culture. Yeah, like how do you how do you correct so, that? And you're going one on one with them, call them out. Um, we we don't we don't like to f- use the word fire. We don't like to fire anybody um, for a few reasons. Like we want to help people, right? I mean, you're not helping somebody by cutting them loose. Um, I think most people can see the value in it. It can show them if you can prove someone a successful model works, right? They're gonna keep. They can be hard nosed all they want, but eventually they're gonna, they're gonna. If if they're not being successful in their model, and I can show them that this model 
of being positive and being more successful is more successful. We'd like to work one on one with them. There have been some bad apples that we did have to let go, but it's it's not usually the case. Most people will follow a successful model, not just a positive one, but if you show positivity works and positivity is happy and positivity is fun. Yeah, there's probably like there's like a barrier. And it's successful. And yeah. they make money doing it. It's it's not just, you know, lollipops and gumdrops. It's yeah, it's there's like, dollar bills too. And I, and right? I, think, so I think I think this is both. I think if it, to put it simply what you're saying, it's like I'm over here in my own world sucking and hating life and yeah. negative and whatever and I'm trying to be successful. Yeah. <laughs> in my path, right? right? There's a wall here and we're over here there's with our culture. Yeah, there's there. a bunch of people over here successful. It's like, geez, man, like just come over the wall, man. We're over here. <laughs> yeah. like, it's like, you know, and I think well, a lot of times they just can't even see it because it's behind the wall. They're like, and, oh. and we try to go over and open the door for them several times. And we're, yeah. hey, we're not just going to cut them loose and say you didn't fit. Exactly. We're going to try to get them over. And um, not in most cases, going to be the perfect fit for this culture. You That's know, true. Um, I wasn't the perfect fit in my whole culture. <laughs> Point proven. You know, sometimes you just got to find your right culture. You gotta find your right fit. It's true. And when we were gonna talk about recruiting, that's kinda how we got to there. Like it works. Like if you it's show natural. your positivity, yeah. it, it works. Because there's a lot of people that are stuck. It may not necessarily be positivity. Say your culture is meatheads and gym lifters. You may find a roofing sales guy that just loves to hit the hit the weights and wants to come work out with you. Right? There's yeah. different there's different cultures in different roofing companies. But if you if you if that's your culture, if your whole team likes to go work out together at the gym and y'all like to get up there and throw the shingles up on the roof one arm at a time, then find other roofers that like to do that and hang out with them and yeah. and, and recruit them to your team. Do it with social media. Do it with your culture. I, love and I don't necessarily know what other people's example. cultures are. I focus on mine, and I don't I don't think anyone's the right answer. I just know what mine is. I know what my vision is, and I'm going to execute. I love that. So. I love that. So let's wrap up. So what we're going to do is there's a bunch of people still on here. So, Kristen, we're going to kind of – End the podcast now, but so what we're going to do is, and I honestly, I appreciate you guys and being on the show. Like this has been awesome. It's like, been a great two days. It, it's been a fun two days. I could what, go, I could go, I could go for another week. Let's, so wait, let's, let's I, so, fun. so I want to hear just for all this. This is the first time in any environment I've been out talked by two people though. Yeah. I, I gotta say How's that, that feel? No, it's, <laughs> I've, I've been enjoying it. I mean, I, I just, I, you know, it was kind of like. Watching no, but I want to hear, I guess, <laughs> from the weekend, you know, we've done two big trainings. Like, what did you guys learn from, uh, you know, the trainings this last couple days? Like, how did you guys, I what was the experience? I, I watched you interact with the team and watched light bulbs pop off on these guys, you know. And while we're trying to teach the model and the whole system of how they get paid and get jobs done and all that, it all starts with finding somebody, you know. So that was very important. I'm very thankful that you called and wanted to do this with us because that was that was something that you know I knew was going to impact the team. Yeah, I was more excited about that than podcast or anything. We got a lot. Of, we got a lot of great feedback too. Yes, everyone. Everyone had a blast. Everybody was very. Um, everyone said they learned a lot, and uh, I know I did. I could learn more. I just that was so much fun. I love to learn. We just kept. Jam. I, I could just go jam. jam. I could sit. Jam. I could sit in that desk and just I jam. That was awesome. Long. So it's different one, sales meetings, different just merging these two different. Fields like what y'all do in door to door. I'm sure there's some door to door guys. Door door is the fundamentals. What it does in our business. He's got the very unique networking marketing side of it that really didn't exist. You know what I mean? And so the hybrid in the middle is is the perfect combo for two hundred percent. So big announcement. These guys will be speaking at DDD Con Virtual. So um, we're gonna have some big guys and. Sam will probably be on the big stage in 2019. Let's go. Let's go. So it'll be fun. So awesome. basically, if you guys like this, like, uh, what's up, Cody? Um, we're going to see them on the big stage, and we're going to see them playing playing, uh, playing a big part and helping contribute. Maybe even – we're going to actually film a little bit, me and Landon, with the uh, university real quick. So if you guys, uh, if you guys like this, uh, share this. We love you guys, and thank you guys for being on the show. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So we're gonna take we're gonna take a we're gonna take a couple of questions now, um, just to kind of banter and those that have some some questions, we see you. So what's up, Rocky? Um, let's see, Logan, you're, you're where are you at? There's no such thing as a bad apple. Okay, so any, <laughs> that's what see? Logan says. You don't do no bad apples. Yeah. Um, okay, so any questions? There are a lot of people on here. We'd love to. You can ask them any questions. Just different flavors. Um, so. Watch this. What's up? That's not a question. You can ask you guys. We have a CEO of a $25 million roofing, you know, in business last year. And, and I've actually got lights and stuff. And all Anthony Domenico. What's, 
Is that Let's Sam? Go. Yep, it's Sam Squared. You got your mop. <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, it is me. It is me. He's chasing I just, mom, Yeah, I'm like, I, I, uh, he hasn't gone. He hasn't gone full stream. It is. I'm t- I've taken it. <laughs> um, yes, I lost my mop. They, I got caught in a lawnmower. We got in a fight, and, and it looked really bad. So I figured I cut the rest of it. Yeah, off. Um, let's see. Any other good questions? Bo Jackson's. Bo, I need some. I need some stuff at the office, Mansfield. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Okay, geez, guys, ask a question. We're, le- we're I'm hanging up in four. Okay, here we go. How many folks are coming to the Blitz tomorrow to watch the Bills? These guys, are, these, <laughs> yes. All right, guys, these guys are ready to work. Let's, let's, okay, let's go. Let's just. I'm done. We love you let's guys. Go. Love you. Awesome. Let's go. I knock doors. All right.